Now we are going to use structs and pointers in the same example. We will create a card deck and try to shuffle them. The steps are we are going to create our card deck using this struct and we are going to create two two-dimensional arrays. One will hold the type of the card, clubs, diamonds, hearts or spades and the other will hold the value of the card like ace, two, three, jack, queen, king or the others. So first let me define my arrays here then you will understand it clearly. Okay, this is my type array, which is, let's name it name. My first array will be a two-dimensional char array. So every row in my two-dimensional array here will hold the type of the card as a string. So a four row, a nine column two-dimensional array is enough for me. And I will have another array here, which is, let's say, And this is my second array, which will hold the value of the cards. One will hold the type of the cards, and the other will hold the value of the cards. So I have 13 row, let's say number here, and six columns. So 13 row, six columns array is enough for me. This will hold the value of my card. So now, before or after defining these arrays, I'm creating an array of objects created from this structure. If I say a card X, my X will hold a pointer to a char location. So I'm gonna give an address to here, to type field of my X from one of these rows. And I'm going to give another address to my X's value field from this array. By defining this, I am actually creating an X in my memory, let's say here. So initially, let's say I'm giving the address of first row of my name array here. Here is name zero. This whole row is name zero because this is a two dimensional array. I'm only specifying the row in this. So I'm giving here name zero. So if I want to print the X's type, it will go to this address and print diamonds to the screen. And then I'm going to give one of these addresses here. Let's say the first one, this is number zero. This is also two dimensional array. So if I say number zero, only the row in this, I'm actually specifying the address of the whole row here. I'm actually specifying the starting location of here, number zero. So I have created my X here, which has two pointer, two char pointers. Each field in this X will be pointing to a char location in the memory. So if I gain name zero, my X's first field will be pointing here. So if I want to print the X's name field to the screen, it will print diamonds. And the second field will also be pointing to a char location in the memory. And it will be pointing here. If I want to print the second field of X to the screen, it will write here, the ace to the screen. By doing this, actually, I have created my card here, my playing card. But this is a single card. I need 52 cards. So instead of one card, I am deleting this. I'm creating an array of objects derived from this structure, created from this structure with the amount of 52. So by doing this, I'm actually creating an array of 52 elements and each element will be holding an object like this. So these will be my objects. I'm storing a card in every element in my array. Each of my cards in my array will be pointing to one of these rows in this array and one of these rows in this array. So my first card is actually pointing this row and this row. Let's say, for example, my second card will be pointing this row again 
but this time this field of my second object will be showing this row. By doing this, I'm creating my whole deck here. Let's say my last one will be pointing the last row of this array here, named three row is here. And the second field of my last object will be pointing here. So it will be spades king. As you can see, every field here only holding an address in the memory. Let's say starting location of this char, these are pointing to a char location because the struct is defined that way. Let's say the starting point of this location is 500. The first field of x will hold, will actually hold the value 500. And let's say this byte's address is 210. Actually, my second field of my X here will be holding 210. My each card here will be holding two pointers, two char pointers, two addresses. That every address is starting with a char and contains a string. If I resolve from that address until I see this sign, I will get the whole string. That's the point. This is my whole array with the name here C. Now if I say printf C once type, if I want to print this to the screen using percentage %s, it means resolve this address and print until you see this sign. So it, it will go to address 500 and it will print all these chars until the last one, the end of string sign here. And within the loop, by using a variable here, I can assign all the values periodically and print them to the screen. And lastly, I need to shuffle the cards. To simply do that, I will create a temporary object here with the same structure and just copy the values of the first object in my array to here, choose a random position, let's say this one, copy these informations over my first object here, this will be overwritten and then copy these information to that object. So basically what I'm doing is getting the first object, choosing a random location, a random in this and swapping them using this third object here, a temporary object. Now let's see it on the actual code. Okay, let's write the codes of our example. Now I will start with defining my structure as you see here. I will have one char pointer in my objects that points to a char location, a single byte in the memory. And I will have another pointer which is the same actually, that is also pointing to a char location in the memory. And I'm naming my structs as card. Now I will create these two two-dimensional arrays. Let's create this two-dimensional array now. This two-dimensional array will hold the name of my card, the type of my card, the face of my card. So each row will be representing the name of my card. So I'm just defining a two-dimensional array here with the name here as we have shown in our example. This is the result. So these are my rows. So I have four rows, two dimensional array here. Diamonds, clubs, hearts and spades. And now let's define our second two dimensional array here. And this array will hold the value of the card. And here is the result. These are my rows. I have 13 rows here. Each of it is holding a value in string format, in char format actually as you can see here. You can also use numeric values maybe, but representing the cards after 10, as you can see, the name can be Jack, Queen or King. It will be hard to represent them as numeric values. So I just represented them as strings here. So each row is a string, a char array, and it means the value of my card. And now if I create my first object, X here with the type of card that I have defined 
here, my x will have two fields, two pointers that each of it will be pointing here and here. My x's type field will be pointing to one of these rows and my x's value field will be pointing to one of these rows. So if I say the type of my x will be the name 1, name 1 here is actually representing the whole row here. This is name 1 because this is a two-dimensional array. So the name field of my x here, as you can see, will be holding the starting point of this row. It's actually will be holding the address of C here. Here, as you can see in the picture, it's actually pointing to a single char. But I know that there will be a rest of it. So if I print them using the percentage as placeholder until I reach the end of line here, I can write the full context. And my x's value is, let's assign one of the rows here, let's say 2, the number 2. This means my value field of my x here will be holding the address of t here. And printing the whole row will give me word 3 here. So instead of using one card, and now I'm defining 52 cards together in an array. Actually, I'm defining an array that every element in the array will be an object created from this struct. So I have 52 x's practically. And I changed the name C. In the next picture, as you can see here, let me magnify it. I actually created an array here and every element is a card. Think every element as a car. Every element has two pointers. So let's fill them within a loop. I'm defining my i here as an integer to be used in my loop. And 52 times execute these lines. It means for every card starting from z0, starting from here until my 52nd card, use one of these rows. This algorithm means use either the row 0, row 1, row 2, or row 3 here. Because if we take the modular of i, it can only be 0, 1, 2, or 3, according to the here. I'm actually giving 1 out of 4 here to my type field of ci here, whichever the card I am on it in that iteration of the loop. And with the same way, I am assigning the value field of my c here I'm assigning 1 of 13 here to my value field of C that I'm currently on. So for 52 cards here, I have assigned these two fields that each of it is representing a name from this array and a value from this array. So first field of my object is pointing somewhere here. And the second field of my object is pointing somewhere here. And let's print them to the screen one by one. For i from 0, i until 52, increment i, and printf. First, the type of the card that I am on it currently, and then the value of the card that I am on it currently. Then put a new line sign here. So I'm printing the ci's type and then ci's value. So this is it. However, these fields are pointing only a single char here. And this field is pointing to a single char here, one of these rows. I'm printing them starting from that address until I see the end of line sign here. If the first field of c here, as you can follow from the picture, is pointing to D here, I can print diamonds. I can print the word diamonds by using S placeholder here. Because this means start printing the string starting from this address and go on printing until you see this sign here. And if I run my code, as you can see, these are my playing cards. Now we need to shuffle them randomly. To do that, I need to generate a random number and to do that I'm including my time library here then I'm using my seed here 
then I'm defining an integer r here that will hold the random number that I will generate within seconds. So after assigning my values, let's shuffle the cards here and print after shuffling. To do that, I'm defining a temporary card here. Let's say card temp. And my temp is here. Actually, I have created another card. Now I have 53 card actually 52 is my deck and this is the temporary card i will use to swap objects in my array to shuffle them for i equals to zero and do it for all 52 of them it means do it for every object here one by one so this is the result this is the shuffling algorithm actually what you're doing here is swapping two objects and to do that, first I'm generating a random number here between 0 and 52 and assigning it to our variable here. After that, in this line, I'm taking the information of my C0, let's say we are in the first iteration in this loop. I'm taking the information of card 0 and copying it, overwriting it to my card temp. You can directly assign two variable like this. You don't need to copy the fields one by one. You don't need to copy the information here to here and here to here separately. You just need to copy the whole card to the other card. This will overwrite the whole information to the suitable places. So this field will be copied to this field automatically and this field will be copied to here automatically. So I have copied my card zero to my temp variable here. Then let's say we have produced 11 after the execution of random function here. We are taking the information of card 11 and copying it to card zero. We are overwriting the card zero with the values of card 11 actually. Then in the fourth line here, we are taking a temp and overwriting the card 11 here with the values of temp. So we are taking the values in temp and overwriting it to the card 11. What we are doing is basically swapping card 0 and card 11. We are taking the information here into a suitable place, into an empty place first. Then we are overwriting the card 11 to card 0. And then we are taking the information of temp here to card 11. This is the procedure of swapping two things. And we are doing it for 52 times randomly. We are actually taking each card here one by one and swapping it with a card in random in this, in random place in this array. So if I run my code, here is the result. If I run my code again, you see that all values are changed because every time I run it here, this code will shuffle the deck randomly. Here is the all code. So this was another example of using structures and pointers together. Thanks for watching.